and, and what I saw, and, and you know that I followed the polls very closely, I probably followed about seven independent pollsters for a good three months out. And, and Aaron, we did a show about three episodes ago. We at, Remember the show, it might have been called Inside the, the Latest Poll Numbers, and, and I think the subheadline was the numbers aren't adding up. Do you remember this? We talked yeah. about this. Mm-hmm. So the numbers that I just showed, the 312 to 226, do you realize that every single one of these independent, bipartisan, non-Republican, non-Democrat pollsters, every single one of them had Trump winning the electoral vote at a minimum of 50, but most were at 100? I just showed 312 to 226. They nailed it. Every single one of them were scratching their heads going, none of this math is adding up. To your point, all of these little psyop uh, language manipulation type things, using these toxic terms that they used in Nazi Germany, and then actually comparing the other candidate to Nazi Germany. <laughs> At some point, you can only intelli- you can only insult the intelligence of the American people long enough before they go, this is not American. This is not how you treat the other candidate. This is right out of the Nazi playbook. So they're, they're actually ninja level gaslighters because everything that they were accusing Trump of, they were doing in plain sight. They, to me, I, I firmly believe at this point, and I'm no Trump fan. I actually think there were, were better candidates. I preferred to see somebody like a Ron DeSantis rise up as the next generation of Republican leadership. I wanted RF Kennedy to be a Democrat and fix the party. By the way, I'm going to talk about this in a minute. RFK, if he was allowed to run as a Democrat, would have absolutely blown Joe Biden out of the water in a primary. By the way, they didn't allow the primary, and he would have crushed Donald Trump in the master election. I'll talk about that in a minute. They, they missed it. And I'm going to talk in a minute about how the Democrats actually got Trump elected. They did it every step of the way. They got their worst nightmare into office for another four years. But going back to what we were just saying about this terminology and the manipulation and the gaslighting, I mean, you almost need to be asleep to not say that this is really not how you run a campaign. You run a campaign based on what have you accomplished, number one, track record. What can you accomplish, number two, future pacing, what are my plans? So you really know that you have a bad candidate, a bad marketer, a bad leader, a bad CEO, when they can only throw stones in gaslight and they don't say, here's what I've accomplished. I think track records are critical. And here's what I'm going to do moving forward. Here's my vision for improving your life. Those are the big two. Now, Trump did that. Trump had excellent, excellent advice advisory and the people that just decided to come onto the team along the way. J.D. Vance is absolutely brilliant. He's one of the nicest guys I think I've ever seen in politics. He's calm. He's calculated. He's respectful. That's the VP. Guys like Vivek Ramaswamy, RFK, Tulsi Gabbard, Bill Ackman, Elon Musk, all these people that came over. By the way, Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy, you know they're running this new government efficiency division. First of all, let me explain something for anybody who's having trouble keeping up with us right now. Vivek Ramaswamy and Elon Musk are legitimate, categorized geniuses. They check every box. They are self-made billionaires, and you don't get to be a self-made billionaire if you're not brilliant. Is nobody a billionaire? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he scored in the biotech industry, and he wrote the book Woke Inc. So he was warning the public seven years ago about this wokeism industrial complex that was permeating corporate America in the school system. Great book. We'll put it in the show notes called Woke Inc. But Elon Musk is, Musk's book is really good as well. And he just appeared on Joe Rogan right before the election. And he broke down a lot of what you just mentioned there and a lot of what I've been screaming from the rooftop on social media, which is these little pillars that they're putting in place, these little misdirections, these little gaslighting moves, these little persuasion techniques that they're using that really are evil words in a lot of cases that just drained the American people. And it drained them to the point where there was no one left to vote for them. The fact that Donald Trump won the popular vote is the greatest slap in the face to the Democrat Party, maybe in the history of its existence. At the end of the day, they thought they could have lost the electoral vote because Republicans tend to do well in these battleground states like Pennsylvania and Michigan, right? Heartland of America, Sunbelt type states. So they were worried about those states. But you know what they always could hang on? No matter what, we're way more popular than Republicans. Even if we lose the election, we can hang our heads high. You know why? Because we won the popular vote. At the end of the day, our egos are still good because we're popular. They like us. You got smashed in the popular vote by 5 million votes by one of the most unpopular candidates in American history, and that is Donald Trump. 
He is a very unpopular, polarizing candidate, and he annihilated you in the popular vote, and he annihilated you in the electoral vote. In all of these these counties and cities and states across America, they all said, we want conservative leadership. We just looked at four years of liberal leadership, and we've seen four years of conservative leadership under Trump. And you know what? We had secure borders. We had law and order. We had low inflation. We were energy independent, not energy dependent, buying oil from Venezuela. We were not in three wars. And there was not a censorship industrial complex that was shutting down any dissent or debate or anybody who wanted to rise up and speak against the establishment. They were done. I was done. You were done. You would have been done if you were here. Rogan was done. Musk was done. Kennedy was done. Right? Ackman was done. These are people who didn't need to put their businesses and their lives on hold to explain what I just explained publicly in rallies and doing 10 speeches a day. 